It's time to talk about the forces that cause centripetal acceleration. When a car races around a circular track, it's the friction on the tires that causes the centripetal acceleration. So we could say that friction is the centripetal force. When a satellite travels around a planet, it's gravity that causes the centripetal acceleration of the satellite. So we could say gravity is the centripetal force. When a hammer is swung in a circle, it's the tension on the cable that causes the centripetal acceleration of the ball. In this case, it's the cable that the hammer thrower is holding that causes the centripetal force. The main point here is that there's no new force to consider. It's the same forces that you've dealt with in the past, but in this case, they're being used to move an object in a circular path. If the net forces, from whatever their source, cause an object to have centripetal acceleration, you can call the force centripetal force, if you really want to. Many textbooks do this, that is, make reference to a centripetal force. But I find that students get into their minds that if we're talking about a centripetal force, then there must be some new special force that we're talking about. But there isn't. In fact, I prefer just to refer to centripetal acceleration and never even use the term centripetal force just to avoid that confusion. But to be clear, there's no magical force called centripetal force. Given that, you will definitely run into people using the term centripetal force. Some will use it to describe any force causing a centripetal acceleration, which is fine, but many non-physics students will use it to describe some magical force that pushes things outwards, which is just plain wrong. By the time you're done this unit, you'll have this perfectly clear and you can avoid these errors.